Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture today on direct inguinal hernia. So, uh, what are we going to learn in direct inguinal hernia? Direct inguinal hernia is always, if you see, it is always acquired. It is never congenital. Direct inguinal hernia, it is always acquired and it is never congenital. It is mainly because there is a weakness or defect in the fascia termitia, sorry, transversalis fascia and because of this weakness, there is uh, protrusion of bowels to outside. Now, this hernia which occurs, as I have said, it most commonly occurs in Hesselbeck's triangle. So, what is Hesselbeck's triangle? This is anterior superior iliac spine. This is pubic tubercle and pubic symphysis. Now, this is the inguinal ligament. Hesselbeck's triangle is formed inferiorly by the inguinal ligament and on the lateral side on the media medially it is formed by the media by the rectus muscle and laterally it is formed by the inferior epigastric artery so this triangle which is formed below by the inguinal canal medially by the uh, inferior rectus mu sorry rectus muscle and laterally by the inferior epigastric artery that is called as Hesselbeck's triangle. So this is Hesselbeck's triangle. The content of this triangle is nothing but the inguinal direct inguinal hernia. It comes out through this. Uh, triangle. Now, what are the coverings of direct inguinal hernia? The coverings of direct inguinal hernia are nothing but the coverings of the abdominal wall. So, if you see, these are the intestines which have come out of the direct inguinal hernia. Now, there is first, we were just about the direct inguinal hernia, there is a fascia which is called as uh, fascia transversalis. Okay, this is fascia transversalis now just below the fascia transversalis there is first before fascia transversalis there is extra peritoneal tissue okay then extra this is extra peritoneal tissue this is fascia transversalis and just above the fascia transversalis there is conjoined tendon just above the fascia transversalis there is conjoint tendon so this is conjoint tendon and above the conjoint tendon there is spermatic fascia this is spermatic fascia okay that is external spermatic fascia and then finally there will be skin so these are the different layers of direct inguinal hernia. What are the layers of direct inguinal hernia? There is extra peritoneal tissue and then above it there is fascia transversalis. Just above it there is conjoined tendon. Just above it there is external spermatic fascia and then skin. So what are the etiological features? Etiological features of any hernia direct or indirect so that those are same. Okay. What are the clinical features? Clinical features are similar. They have... Um, Dragging sensation will be there and then uh, they have a swelling. So, what are the main clinical features? If this is the abdomen, they have, uh, here there is a hernia. So, because there is a hernia here, they have dragging sensation. First, they will have swelling and then they will have dragging sensation. Okay. So, these are the things that are seen. And then uh, there can be pain, sometimes uh, there can be features of reducibility, reducibility. And then cuff impulse, most important thing is cuff impulse is positive. The swelling also increases on cuffing or on lifting heavy weights. Okay, all these should be taken into account. So till history, uh, you cannot differentiate whether it is direct or indirect inguinal hernia. The only thing where you can differentiate direct and indirect inguinal hernia is by the presence of tests. There are many tests, mainly three tests. I will explain them uh, from the tests which I have take, I have done while doing the examination part. So, right. So, let us see the three tests which are done in direct inguinal hernia. So, 
in directing vinyl hernia the first test which is done is called as Zeeman's test so this Zeeman's test can be done either in standing or in lying down position but but mostly we do in lying down position in lying down position we will first ask the person to lie down okay and then we will ask him to reduce the swelling by its by himself once he reduces the swelling you cannot see the swelling at all now you will mark superficial inguinal ring deep inguinal ring and also the femoral sorry uh, saphenous ring so this is the superficial inguinal ring which is present 1.25 cm above the pubic tubercle it is a triangular opening which is seen in the external oblique upon uracils whereas the deep inguinal ring it is present 1.25 cm above the midline between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis that is from anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis you will draw a line and from that line you will take the midpoint and from that midpoint you will uh, see 1.25 cm above it and you will mark it as deep inguinal ring this deep inguinal ring is a u-shaped slit like aperture which is present in the fascia transversalis there is a canal which is present between the superficial inguinal ring and the deep, in deep inguinal ring and superficial inguinal ring and that is called as inguinal canal now how are you going to see saphenous opening saphenous opening it is present three centimeters below and lateral to the pubic tubercle you will find pubic tubercle and from the pubic tubercle you will go three centimeters below and laterally now for this zeman test you use three fingers one being the so this is the thumb so we use mainly three fingers index finger middle finger and ring finger now this index finger is put on the deep inguinal ring middle finger is put on the superficial inguinal ring and the ring finger is put on the saphenous opening so the index finger is put on the deep inguinal ring middle finger is put on the superficial inguinal ring and the ring finger is put on the saphenous opening now once we have put this we will ask the person to cough when the person cuffs, if the impulse is felt on the index finger, then it is indirect inguinal hernia. If the impulse is felt on the middle finger, that is at the superficial inguinal ring, then that is direct inguinal hernia. If the impulse is felt on the ring finger, that is at the saphenous opening, then that is femoral hernia. So this is how we differentiate each type of hernia. Okay, if it's direct, we will have to see the impulse on the middle finger, that is at the superficial inguinal ring. Now the next test which we can do is deep ring occlusion test even in the deep ring occlusion test we will have to ask the person to lie down and then we will ask the person to reduce the contents once the contents are reduced then um, you will see deep inguinal ring so on the deep inguinal you will for this deep, deep deep ring occlusion test we will use the thumb so i will put my thumb over the deep ing inguinal ring and i will occlude it now i'll ask the person to cough when the person coughs if the swelling is seen medially here if the swelling i can see it medially here then that is direct inguinal hernia if i cannot see any swelling then that is indirect inguinal hernia now i will remove the thumb on removing the thumb again i'll ask the person to cough now if i see any swelling then that is indirect inguinal hernia okay so an occlusion here in direct inguinal hernia you will have to see the uh, swelling here okay direct inguinal hernia swelling occurs here okay that should be seen then you will have to look for finger invagination test in finger invagination test you will have to use your little finger from the little finger if this is the scrotum i'll go below the scrotum and i will occlude the superficial inguinal ring and i will just uh, move my finger a little medially such that the pulp of the finger is like this and tip faces here if the swelling is felt on the pulp of the finger then that is direct inguinal hernia so once if you have under, found out here finger invagination test is just to know it because i can i i'm I, i'm not good at feeling this finger invasion test now once you have done all these tests you will confirm that it is a direct inguinal hernia once you have confirmed that it is a direct inguinal hernia what are the investigations that you have to do the investigations that you will be doing for direct inguinal hernia include you will do ultrasound abdomen and also you will do all the surgical prof uh, profile for because the main mode of treatment of direct inguinal hernia is by surgery in the surgery you will do hernioplasty 
okay what are you going to do in hernioplasty if this is the sac and this is the wall you will just uh, no, re, these are the contents first you will reduce the contents okay this is the sac now you will excise the sac these are the contents this is the abdominal wall now you will put a mesh so that this will not recur so that is hernioplasty placement of mesh is a different thing here Okay, placement of mesh. This is hernioplasty. So this is how we treat direct inguinal hernia. I think you guys have understood about direct inguinal hernia. So thank you guys for watching my lecture. If you have any doubts, please comment it in the comment section. In my next class, I will explain about the different new types of hernias. Thank you for watching my lecture. Thank you.